one of the important things and one of the first questions we get from farmers when, say, we do an assessment of, you know, uh, the impact on cover crops that we're doing in, you know, the mid-Atlantic states. First question, legitimate question that we get from uh, um, farmers is, hey, you know, what data are you using to confirm that? Hi, and uh, welcome to Illinois Corn TV. I am John Clem, a farmer and a director here at Illinois Corn. Today we are joined by Brad Dorn, who is uh, with NASA. He is the Agriculture Program Manager in Earth Sciences. We're glad to have him. Thank you so much for joining us today, Brad. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to get started by just jumping right into some questions, if that's all right. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, excited to hear uh, what you have to say. So um, let's just start out with sharing with the audience uh, some basic things. So, you know, tell us about how NASA and agriculture can be used in the same sentence and a little bit of what's going on there. Sure. And most people think about NASA and agriculture. They think about uh, how do we feed astronauts getting to Mars. Um, what they don't realize is about as old as astronauts are, that is literally since the 60s, NASA's been uh, focusing on global agriculture issues. Um, we were sort of pulled into that in those early days of global food security. So us being able to monitor our global competitors and partners and markets uh, was uh, a key use of satellite data. And since then, it's just evolved like all technologies. You know, you just have to go out to the farm and see the evolution of technology. Um, the same with us. And so now the data is getting uh, better, uh, more accurate, and also uh, more integrated with farming systems. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so a lot of connection from the data side. Obviously, as a farmer myself, I know how critical data is to us. It be, continues to become more and more part of the portfolio that we are using to make this decisions based off of. So um, let's start out by maybe one of those data pieces. What is the GeoGlam crop monitor and how is that used? Sure. Yeah, the, the, the crop monitor was developed in order for people all over the world, including uh, us in the United States, would have a place they could go in and quickly assess the conditions of crops, the uh, potential yields that there may be, uh, impacts uh, of whether it's a a uh, a conflict in you know Ukraine or a cyclone in Malawi or a drought or flood in the United States, they could get an assessment of what the potential impact is, and so it was really meant for economist, um, sort of national level uh, assessments. So what we're, that's evolved into then is, you know, as a farmer needs, he's, he's getting more and more data, you're getting more and more data. But the question is, how does that data get used over and over again? So 20 years from now, John, you know, can you make, can we make sure or help you make sure that that data is consistent so when your kids start uh, farming or the next generation start farming, they can look back and say, hey, I have this great historical data. So one of the things we're really tied, tied into going from those national policymakers to letting the farmers grow that data up and get involved in how that data is being developed. Yeah, very good. Um, so I, I think an example would be um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that you guys took a look at Ukraine. You went in and you map you mapped some some crop boundaries there. You know, let, let, let's walk through that. Use that as an example to share with the listeners uh, how that innovative system can work. Sure. Yeah, the Ukraine's a good example of us and and the technology because, in, as you probably know, in the beginning of these. Markets go nuts, speculators go nuts, everyone, you know, the world's falling and, you know, and all we're looking for is some concrete data. So they, they asked us, the G20 Ag Ministers, can you do an assessment of really what's going on on the ground? And, and the reality was those farmers were 
it was amazing. They had actually good yields. And one of the questions was, though, is, and it's a question in the United States and everywhere, when you're doing these assessments, um, we really lose a lot of accuracy and validity if you're, if you're integrating, say, you know, a ditch or that other field, you know, the soybean field with the corn field and trying to do an assessment. So in so doing that, they used high resolution satellite data to then help map those boundaries so that when we're assessing, in this case, if it, if it was sunflower in Ukraine or uh, corn or soy, they, you know, they could very quickly then say, no, that is, you know, a particular crop. So understanding those boundaries is extremely important. Otherwise, the data can get mushy. Uh, you know, the assessment because you're mixing different types of observations. So uh, that sounds like we got a great, you know, kind of real world experience, for example, where um, you guys were able to go in, take that assessment, take the boundaries and really know that exact set of data that you're looking at, which then what I would assume is uh, that, you know, myself as a farmer who, as you alluded to, could be using this type of data for generations to come can start to become very confident in what in what quality of data is coming out of that, right? That's right. And vice yeah. versa, John. One, one of the important things and one of the first questions we get from farmers when, say, we do an assessment of, you know, uh, the impact and cover crops that we're doing in, you know, the mid-Atlantic states. First question, legitimate question that we get from uh, um, farmers is, hey, you know, what data are you using to confirm that? And, uh, and, and with all the data that the farmers have, really good data that they have, you know, they rightfully are saying, listen, I want to be able to see that assessment as compared to what I'm seeing on the ground. And one of the big pushes of our program is trying to find out how do we do that? You know, how do we develop governance models in order for farmers to really be able to use that data and also protect their privacy, protect their data rights, make sure it's, you know, not being used in a way that they don't want it to be used. It's their data. So that's a, that's a big challenge, but a critical one. I, I like to end the shows here with uh, a, a a part that we call not to be corny. All right. So, so bear with me and, and, uh, we'll get a good laugh here. So what, what would you call a space farmer working with NASA harvest? Oh man. Sorry. We, we here at uh, Illinois corn, well, we like to call him a crop And knot And it's corny and I love it. Yeah, it is corny, right? We we keep it about as corny as possible, but we like to have a we like to have a good laugh and and uh we like to let our listeners know that you know we're just having fun and trying to keep everybody informed. So uh Brad, if you don't have anything else to add, uh really appreciate your time. Good getting to know you and and great learning a little bit more about what NASA is doing and how they're involved in agriculture. Well, thank you so much. And let me know if there's any, any follow-up, any uh, of your listeners have questions. I'd, I'd, I'd love to you know, help out more. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.